What is going on my fitness junkies? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my testosterone results. I'm gonna reveal them at the end of this video for you guys, but more importantly, I'm gonna be showing you guys all the research, everything that I've learned over the past few months since the first time I got blood work results, and what I've found is the best way to increase your testosterone. So stick around to the very end where I reveal my blood work, reveal my results in the past few months, uh, but most of this video is going to be about how to increase your testosterone and some practical real tips on how you can do this for yourself. So let's get right into it. So a lot of research and a lot of this information that I came up with to try to increase my testosterone was actually, I want to shout out Andrew Huberman. His podcast on testosterone and estrogen was incredible. That's where I got most of my information from. Um, so I'm going to put that in the link in the description. Definitely check this podcast out by Andrew Huberman. Um, if you want to learn, you know, a lot more about this subject and get a really dig deep dive into this. Um, so I'm going to be talking about what I took away, what I've been changing in my own life, um, to try to increase my testosterone. But if you want like a deep dive into this, that's going to be in the link in description, Andrew Huberman's podcast on testosterone and estrogen. Now, one of the biggest things that I've found that can have a needle moving effect on your testosterone is your sleep. And I've done a sleep podcast in the past. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check that out. But sleep is a number one thing that I've started to pay attention to really closely when I found out that I had lower testosterone a few months ago. So some things I've changed just to briefly go into it. And if you want to deeper dive into that, go check out my sleep podcast or my sleep episode. But you want to make sure that you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep uh, for your optimal hormone levels. Some things that I've changed, I've recently got a whoop. Highly recommend it. It's allowed me to get a lot more data on my sleep patterns and kind of make sure I'm optimizing things. And it's almost like having your own sleep coach. So it's really cool. That's something I've changed and my sleep has drastically improved. I mean, I was already on kind of a sleep improvement journey before, but now I feel like I've 100% optimize my sleep. So that's something that's drastically improved there. Um, stress, less stress, and kind of stress management is something I've been paying attention to. A few things that I've changed with that is journaling, just trying to be more mindful, you know, being able to shut off at the end of the day and, and just stop working. You know, when, even if you feel like you got a thousand tasks that you got to do, just at the end of the day, shut it off. It's going to help your sleep for one thing. It's going to help your stress. So the, there's a lot of improvement that can come from just shutting things off, having some downtime towards the end of the day and winding down. So that's something I've changed. Um, breathing through my nose, believe it or not. So this is a huge thing that Andrew Huberman talks about in his podcast, but not only when you sleep, trying to breathe through your nose using things like even mouth tape, which I tried, not for me. Um, you can try it for yourself, do your own research on that, but it caused me to wake up in the middle of the night. Um, but one thing I am doing is just throughout the day, trying to consciously think about breathing through my nose a lot more. And this is something that not only improves your sleep by doing this, you know, whether you're sleeping or not, um, breathing through your nose is going to improve your sleep, but it's also got a direct correlation to your hormones. Okay. So it's, it's going to improve your sleep, which will in, in effect, uh, improve your hormones. And it has a direct correlation to just improving your hormones, um, without the correlation with sleep. So breathing through your nose is huge. I've started supplementing with magnesium and zinc. So these are a couple of uh, supplements that can definitely help. I've also heard ashwagandha. That's not something that I've been doing yet, but magnesium and zinc is definitely something I've started supplementing with to try to increase my testosterone. Um, I've recently stopped drinking alcohol. So I've, I've recently just completely cut it out for the past eight months or so. And this didn't have to do with me trying to increase my testosterone. This was just a decision I made. Um, I'm not saying I'm never going to drink alcohol ever again. I probably will on special occasions, but it's just something that I haven't needed in my life. And that's, that's something that also has an effect on your testosterone as well. So stop drinking alcohol. I've started doing a lot of walking, a lot of steps, trying to get a lot more active throughout the day. I've got a standing desk, so I'm obviously, you know, up on my feet quite a bit throughout the day, just trying to get that extra activity. And then less processed foods. That's something I've definitely started paying attention to because a lot of highly processed foods can lower your, your hormone levels, lower your testosterone. So that's something that I've changed. 
And then something I talk about also in my sleep video is trying to get a lot of sunlight early on in days, actually getting sun on your eyeballs. That's why I have a big window right here that I open up early in the day, look out there, kind of get my circadian rhythm firing, getting on the right track, and then eliminating light in the night so that I get good sleep. You know, these things help your sleep, but they also, they also help your hormone levels. So those are a lot of the things that I've changed for myself. Um, and if, like I said, if you want to really deeper dive into this, check out Andrew Huberman's podcast, Testosterone and Estrin, link in the description. Um, but with no further ado, guys, now that I've told you kind of all the things that I've been implementing to attempt to improve my testosterone, I'm going to go ahead and share my results with you guys, walk through everything, um, and then I'll give my thoughts at the end, you know, with this whole journey of this hormone optimization journey that I'm on. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. I'm going to share my results, complete open book, um, and then I'll kind of touch base with you on my thoughts and everything I plan to do moving forward. All right, guys. So this is actually very hard for me to share. So I'm actually going to go ahead and share my screen and show you guys my actual results. So I went ahead and used Quest Diagnostics for my blood work. So you can see this is actually me, Kate Junkerth, you know, all my information here. Um, but my results for testosterone. So my, um, sorry, so my total testosterone here was 347. Um, the reference range is 250 to 1100. That's that's the range that it should be in. Obviously, I'm at way at the the lower end. All right, and a few months ago, when I made the first testosterone results video, I was at 476. So despite making all these changes, it's gone even lower. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it here in a second more. But I think that being in a deficit of calories is the biggest factor in this, and that's why I want to stress to you guys. You know, if you are in a deficit of calories trying to lose weight, that's great because, yeah, losing body fat percentage in the long run is going to help your testosterone. But keep in mind, like, don't try to be in a deficit for two years. Like, you know, don't don't be in a deficit for too long. Try to reach your goals at a at a decent rate, because being in a deficit for a while does temporarily decrease your testosterone. So I, I'm confident that's going to come back up. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, after going through all those those changes, making all those tweaks, doing all this research, it's gone down even more. So I'm almost at the very end of like the lower end of my testosterone for the total for 347. My my free testosterone is also for sure on the lower end at 47.2. The reference range you can see here is 35 to 155. So yeah, so men with clinically significant hypogonadal symptoms and testosterone values um, repeatedly in the range of the 200 to 300 um, or less may benefit from testosterone treatment. So it's basically saying like, I am almost at that point where I would benefit from testosterone treatment. They're almost recommending that even at the clinical level. Okay. So, so definitely on the lower end, definitely not what I was hoping for. Definitely pretty shocked after seeing this. Uh, I also got some, some other results with my cholesterol, which is healthy. So my cholesterol is good. Uh, my thyroid is healthy as well, for sure. Cortisol, I, I was interested in cortisol because I know that high stress, you know, high cortisol can correlate with low testosterone, but I'm in the healthy range for cortisol, so we can pretty much rule that out uh, with the stress. I'm definitely in the healthy range there. Um, so th that's all the blood work that I got, but guys, like, like I said, this is not easy to share. Um, so I hope you're taking something away from this. Um, and, and what I think you can take away from this is if you are dieting, trying to get to that lower body fat percentage, that is great. That's going to help you in the long run, but make sure you reach your goals in a timely manner. And you're not just chronically in a deficit of calories for like a super long time, because that is affecting your testosterone, like getting to a maintenance of calories, maybe even a slight surplus in the long, like at some point that's going to be better for your testosterone. Okay. So I hope this helps you. For you guys seeing this and uh i'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screens and uh and i'm gonna touch back with you guys on kind of just my overall takeaways now obviously these are pretty disappointing results right and th this is not what i was hoping for when making this you know reveal with my new results my new blood work but the biggest factor in all this i believe is that i just lost like 28 pounds from when I got my last blood work results 
to now. Um, I was at about 15% body fat before. I got down to like almost single digit. I was like low tens at the peak of my cut. So losing you know all that body fat, losing all that weight, that that's supposed to be a good thing for your testosterone, like getting a lower body fat percentage. But an overlooked factor is being in a deficit for a long period of time. So I that can definitely lower your testosterone. I think that's the biggest factor out of everything that I've changed. You know, that being one big significant thing, um, I believe is the biggest factor in why I wasn't able to increase my testosterone. So now that I know all this, and now that I'm going to be able to implement this all into my routine, now that I've already kind of made all these changes, now that I'm getting myself into a surplus of calories, at least a maintenance, if not a surplus of calories and shifting into a lean bulk, now I truly believe that I'm going to be able to increase my my testosterone quite a bit. So I plan to do another one of these, get more blood work in about six months and share my results with you guys again. Um, but I really strongly believe that I can increase my testosterone with everything that I've learned and now going into more of a bulk, put on some more muscle, stay in a surplus. I I strongly believe I can make it happen. So I'm not giving up on this journey. I'm definitely going to keep after this and share the journey with you guys and show you guys that you can naturally increase your testosterone. I know it doesn't look like it yet. Um, but some of my big takeaways from this and, you know, things that are keeping my, my mindset in a positive state is one, I made incredible progress despite apparently having low testosterone, which I think is actually encouraging because if I can increase my testosterone, it's like, imagine how much progress I can make at that point, right? I lost 5% body fat, maintained my strength and muscle. Um, and, and that was with low testosterone, like pretty low, almost like at the very end of what you can like have on a healthy level, right? So now that I know um, that I can make that sort of progress with lower testosterone, it's got my mind thinking like, what can I do if I actually can increase my testosterone to to near optimal levels, right? So that's what I'm shooting for. I also know that androgen receptor density can have a big role in, in your testosterone. So sometimes if you have high androgen level density, then you don't need as much testosterone because your receptors are actually able to use the testosterone really well. So it's not something I know for myself. Um, I'm just kind of speculating, um, you know, just kind of making an assumption there. But I I would think that I actually have high um, androgen receptor density because that's something that I've tried to increase in the past. I don't know what my androgen receptor density is, but maybe it's something that I can get tested in the future as well. And then knowing that information, like maybe I don't need as much testosterone to be able to utilize the testosterone really well. So that's what that basically means. So other than that, guys, you know, I'm, I'm an open book sharing this journey with you guys. And it it is hard. It, It does have me feeling super vulnerable, but the reason I'm sharing is because I truly believe that I can increase this naturally. I don't want to go the route of using TRT, especially at this age, you know, maybe in the future, maybe when I'm older, maybe when, um, you know, my testosterone is naturally just really bad and it's on the downhill. I can't do anything about it to increase it but I'm going to stave that off as long as I can. I'm going to really strongly try to increase my testosterone naturally, share the journey with you guys. I hope you get something out of this because this is hard for me to share. Um, But, you know, we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. We all have our deficits. And this is definitely something I feel like now knowing this information, this is a weakness of mine. This is a deficit that I have. Um, But you can either think of a deficit or a weakness of you that you have as something that's going to hold you back or you can think of it as if i can make this weakness actually not be a weakness maybe even be a strength and and improve on this then i'm not going to have any deficits and it's going to allow me to to accomplish whatever i want to accomplish right so it it can actually be encouraging instead of discouraging because you're like wow i have a lot of progress that can be made and so that's that's my mindset with it I'm going to try to do my best to to make this weakness a strength show that you can do this naturally share their journey with you guys, and I hope you get inspired from it. Um, but other than that, guys, you know, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, stay tuned for more open book information and motivation and fitness um, inspiration, hopefully for you um, on, on this podcast and on this YouTube channel. Uh, you know, We're almost at a thousand subscribers. I'm right there. So 
please make sure to subscribe. I appreciate you guys. I've, I've got some loyal followers in here that watch all the videos. So really appreciate you. You keep me going. You keep me making these videos because you know I don't really have to. <laughs> but um, I appreciate you. Follow my journey. Let me know if you guys got any questions. If you're on your own kind of hormone optimization journey as well, leave some comments. You know, Let me know what you guys think. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next video and elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.